One of the biggest issues Ireland faced for over 40 years still hasn't went away. And I'm not talking about the troubles, the recessions or even the backhanders. I'm talking about abortion. Ireland has went from having full protections for unborn babies to having very few indeed since 2019. And now politicians who brought about these new laws are getting a little tetchy. They want to ban any protests against their abortion law that take place near hospitals or clinics. The media's support for such crackdowns has been total, or nearly total. The people taking part in the protests tend to be demonised by reporters and politicians as intimidating, abusive and even sometimes threatening. But Garda Commissioner Drew Harris seems to disagree. He says there's no evidence to suggest any threatening, abusive or insulting behaviour towards people accessing abortion. He also described the pro-life witnesses as peaceful. Limerick Hospital also reported no issues with people holding vigil outside. Nonetheless, Simon Harris and Stephen Donnelly seem intent on pressing ahead with outlawing these protests. One way they did in Britain that was subject to a legal challenge was they brought in um, powers for the local authorities uh, in relation to exclusion zones. There's also the possibility, though, I'd need to engage with the Minister for Justice in relation to criminal, uh, criminal justice legislation around intimidation and harassment. So I intend now, when the door resumes, to meet with the opposition and finalise uh, the approach we're going to take in that regard. So to investigate a little bit more, I talked to a few of these much maligned protesters to get a feeling for just how nasty they really are. And there's accusations that it's intimidating. What do you think? That's rubbish because a lot of the time we do it on like a Saturday morning. So the clinics are closed, doctor surgeries are closed on a Saturday morning. There is nobody there. So we don't intimidate anyone and if Anything we'd give support to people, not intimidate them. We're not there to intimidate people. Look, people need to be alerted to what's happening in the GP clinic. And that's basically the reason we're there. And uh, people come along and people object, fair enough. And uh, people, lots of people are, um, what's the word, uh, in favour of what we're doing. And they thank us. You know. So th the reason is just let people know. Some of us pray, some of us are not uh, Christian, so they can talk to each other, but some of us do pray. We usually pray the rosary, um, and, um, and that's it. There are alternatives out there, and hopefully, I think what needs to happen is people ultimately need to become convinced of the humanity of the unborn child, and I hope that will happen as a result of our work. 29, almost 30 years ago, I became pregnant as a teenage pregnancy, a single parent, and I was, it was suggested to me that I would travel to the UK to have an abortion and I'd never even thought about abortions before. I don't even think I knew about them until then and the thought of it I thought was horrendous and I have now a 29 year old son who's getting married next year and there's no way. Uh, one of my relatives was conceived through rape and another has Turner syndrome, which has a 75% abortion rate if it's diagnosed pre-birth. Um, obviously, it may not be covered under current legislation in Ireland, but I also wonder what would happen if the legislation was different or had been different at the time. Would my relatives be alive now? I'd say to those politicians, why not allow us to stand there to give people support? Some people jump into the decision of aborting their baby. So why not allow us to give them the support, to tell them there are other options. Abortion is not the only option. The, the, the Garda Commissioner Drew Harris uh, uh, spoke and said there's no evidence whatsoever that we're breaking the law, or that we are um, threatening or abusing anybody on the other side, anybody, any pro-choice person who comes along and and uh, is, is a bit annoyed. We, 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 we do not break the law and, and we were very grateful to Drew Harris uh, when he came out and said those things. So having listened to them, it seemed to me as if these people weren't, after all, the scary monsters that politicians would have us believe. The same controversy is being stirred up in England, however, but more and more women on the ground are reporting how these types of people helped them when they were about to choose abortion. Uh, I've been helped at the gates of Mary Stops. Uh, they gave me a leaflet and I was talking with a lady informing me about the option I have 
option. I didn't know I had before when I called the Mary Stopes. And what was your decision having been given the information? I, I had the chance to make a choice. Uh, I had options before the only option I had only abortion. So I, with the help, I, I got the chance of having my child. And your child's with you today? She's your, child, your child's alive today because yes. of the help you're seeing. Yes, she is, yes. Politicians who want to silence the scent are facing another problem, however. It's a piece of paper called the Irish Constitution, Bonrach na Heron, which guarantees a right to assemble even for protests. But a deeper question might be, where does that leave other protests, if they ban this one, that regularly take place outside hospitals? And people might not be happy in the first place that politicians want the power to crack down on any inconvenient causes. Any laws they try to pass might very well infringe on fundamental rights in the Constitution, according to a number of legal experts. When you look at the government reaction to the recent Black Lives Matter protest, the government obviously recognises the importance of protest and supports people's right to protest, but it seems they only support certain people's rights to protest. Um, and if you're the kind of person who thinks that babies' lives matter, well then the government seems to think, well, you shouldn't be allowed to protest. And, and, and in fact, we're going to bring in a law that will prevent you from exercising your human rights. Um, as regards uh, how unusual this is, it's, it's highly unusual. And not only that, but the advice, I, I, as I understand it, that was, was given by the Attorney General to the Taoiseach from what he said, was that this could be seriously problematic from a legal point of view. And I don't think any lawyer would disagree with that. The issue of protesting, whether it's against water charges, lockdowns, or even abortion, has seen the government-funded media outlets take the side of the government and this time is no different so will David beat Goliath on this occasion it remains to be seen mm -hmm.